Welcome back. You've survived the heat of a professional kitchen. You are now cooking for a place in the final ten. So this is a key ingredient challenge, which means you've got to cook a dish which includes pork. You'll be given ten minutes in the pantry to choose your ingredients, and a further ninety minutes to cook. You've got to impress us today, because if you don't, you're going home. So please go to the pantry to choose your ingredients. The key ingredient is pork, and they can choose cuts of either pork fillet, loin, blade steak, or sausage. Okay, guys, your cooking time starts now. My strategy today was to keep it simple, but then when I heard Dylan and Nick say that this was a kickoff for the, the final ten, I thought I better do something a little bit more adventurous. Um, so I decided to do something I'd never done before in my life, which was uh, a loin of pork. Tell us, what are you doing here? This looks interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of uh, make it up as you go along, but I'm hoping it's going to be full of flavour. So it's a, I'm going to try and do a roast loin of pork, and I am going to serve that with a creamed cabbage and a confit of apple and um, crumbed almonds with a bit of a Calvados syrup. Sounds gorgeous. I tell you what I didn't learn about cooking with pressure today, I should be able to transfer that learning to, uh, to this with a bit of luck. Niall is also drawing on his experience in the professional kitchen and going for a fillet of pork with a julienne of vegetables, creamy mashed potato and white wine and tarragon sauce. Are you feeling confident? I am. Today uh, in the kitchen gave me a lot of confidence. Um, I learned how to make this sort of kick-ass mash, so um, <laughs> um, I thought it would be good to show you guys that I can produce something that doesn't look like baby sick. I'm keeping it fairly simple. Um, I'm just trying to... Uh, to get the techniques right this time, and uh, no mistakes. Good man, thanks now. Thank you. Cheers. OK. Hi, Sonia. What's happening? Making potato puffs. What's a potato puff? They puff up to little, like, potato crispy puffs. OK, so like a palm souffle. Uh-huh. OK, and have you done this before? Yes, once. And they work? Yeah. But I never tried them with the violet potatoes, so this will be a first. Um. And I am doing a pork fillet with a schnitzel. I am going to put it into, like, medallions and then beat it up. Is it very thin? Very thin. As thin as I can possibly get it. Yeah. I will think of you when I am pounding the pork. Pounding of course. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't think you should. <laughs> The courage to decide that she was going to do palm souffle. I know chefs who can't do palm souffle. Could be the wrong choice to make. It could be. She's decided to bat the pork out really thin. There's a danger of that drying out. It completely it'll end, it'll end up being like cardboard. Stephanie is preparing her pork three ways. Loin with juniper cream sauce, crackling and chorizo and black pudding con cas. A dish influenced by visits to her sister who lives in Spain. It smells nice, isn't it? It's, yeah, I mean, they're just wonderful flavours. I love them. And would you prefer the Spanish uh, black pudding or the clonic kilti? Oh, well, I'm going to have to say clonic kilti. Yes. In all fairness. Yeah, of course. But the Spanish really know what to do with their blood and guts of an animal. There's no doubt about it. You'll kill me now because I might. I love salt, so I have to watch my own salt. No, I like passion. salt. I love Stephanie's idea of flavour. Yeah, oh, no, she's really... She's really, really I mean... She's got it. it, she's got it. She has so much heart in her food from the last thing that she cooked. I think that she's going to do that again. Mm, it's better. Mm, it's nice. Do you think this is helping you with your confidence? Yeah, even just, it just feels as if this is just a continuation from this morning. And what was the one thing that you learned then from working with those chefs? Um, don't panic, just uh, try and stay cool. Are you cool now? At the moment I am, yeah, but if it starts to, starts to go pear-shaped, I won't be. And Sonia's plan to serve pom souffle is also going pear-shaped. Potatoes started to go wrong for me. I'm just trying to stay calm, stay focused, keep an eye on myself from losing it. We got 15 minutes left, guys. Just 15 minutes. I 
I am a bit under pressure, but hopefully I will be OK. Fingers crossed. Oh, I'm worried. Nobody else has finished. <laughs> It's going to be really hard to get rid of two people today, but it is down to whether or not they have a palate. Everything has to rely on the taste today. OK, guys, unfortunately, time is up. Will you please stop cooking? Time is up. Nick, if you're ready, will you please step up? Nick is serving roast loin of pork, sweet potato and red onion rosti, creamed cabbage and pancetta, and apple confit. As a first picture for a plate of food, it looks beautiful. Thanks. Okay. Well, first of all, I think you really poured a lot of love into your cooking today. That's delicious. Thanks. Overall, I love your cooking. I love the way you look at food. Um, I love your finesse. It just shows real talent. Thanks, Nick. To see a guy of that caliber give you those sort of comments, you know, it's, it's brilliant. Niall's dish is pork fillet with creamy mashed potato, char-grilled vegetables, and a tarragon and white wine sauce. And no lumps. No lumps, exactly. I'd say housewives up and down the country are probably biting their fingernails at the fact that um, you've served the pork so pink. I personally think that is the way it should be served. So marks for that. What have you got in the red pepper? You've got some spice in there as well, have you? Pepper and What's salt. What's the heat? My, my mouth is on fire right now with the pepper. So if you haven't used any spice, it's the heat coming from the pepper. Obviously, you learned that mashed potato this morning. Yes. OK. Have you tasted your one? Yes. There's not enough seasoning in there. Um, I seasoned it back three times. It's just obviously not enough. Yeah. I think the competition today, it's very tough, so I have to judge it um, with severity. You can't season yet. I'm really anxious, because you can't really teach somebody their palate, can you? I really did think I would get more positive feedback than I did. Next, Sonia and her pork schnitzel with apple rings, mushroom and chili sauce, cauliflower puree, and instead of palm souffle, potato crisps. You did set off on the wrong foot with your potatoes, but I think you came back and kept it simple. I like the pork. Sauce goes well with it. The uh, cauliflower puree, it could be smoother. I like the schnitzel. I love the seasoning of the crumbs. But the dish, in terms of its presentation and how it's connected, it looks a wee bit odd. It lacks finesse. But the truth be told, it eats not bad. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, I uh, did enough to... Make it true. It's over and done with now. There's nothing I can do. Stephanie set the standard yesterday. Can she do it again with her char-grilled asparagus and roasted pork loin on a bed of Spanish cancas and sweet potato mash served with crackling and a juniper cream sauce? Let me start off by saying there's no doubt of your talent, there's no doubt of your effort, um, and I love the way you work. But you've made a choice today that I'm a little bit disappointed in, OK? Mm. You've done this mash. So this, for me, it's bland. Okay. And it dominates so much of the dish. Okay. The pork itself, in my opinion, he went further than it maybe should have gone. Do you agree? Yes. The plate does look nice but it is a bit too much of the, the 
potato. And it's a shame because I think what you were trying to achieve was that you knew there was enough sort of saltiness from the chorizo, mm. the black pudding, mm. and you thought that would seep through into mm. the mashed potatoes. Is that, is, that, is that correct? Yeah, well, I suppose I thought it would be eaten together on the fork, so yeah. I thought that at that point it would balance itself. I, w I was frightened of, 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 to, of, blowing. Of, of blowing it with salt, I'll be honest. Yeah. yeah. OK. Thank you, Stephanie. OK, Good thanks. Job. thanks. Thank you. It's hard when, when yesterday was very positive and today was not so positive. So it's a, it's a tough competition, but, um, you know, it's in the lap of the gods or with Dylan and Nick right now. <laughs> Everybody today can cook, can really cook. Yeah, strong heat. Strong, very strong. It's unfortunate that we have to weigh up who is more worthy at this point. They're neck and neck. It's very hard to make that choice. It's been the most difficult decision of the heats, and it seems a real shame to have to eliminate today. The next person to eat the MasterChef kitchen is... Niall. Thanks, Niall. Thanks, Niall. I'm kicking myself. I could have just seasoned my dish better. How idiotic it is for me to just make a mistake like that and end up out of the competition. It was so frustrating. Unfortunately, you're only as good as the last dish that you've cooked. The next person to leave the MasterChef kitchen is... Stephanie. Thank Thanks, you, Stephanie. Stephanie. I am just deeply disappointed. I would have absolutely, passionately and most definitely loved to have gone through. But it's a cooking competition and, um, and today Sonia cooked a better dish. They had to choose me, really. Is it too late for bribery? <laughs> so, congratulations. You two are both through to the final ten. So well done. Thank you. And we'll see you guys back here very soon. Delighted to get through to the last day, and you know, I feel it's like a big achievement. Well, we're true. Yeah, I suppose just enjoy it. And... I'm not going to relax and celebrate now. I'm going to have to keep a level head, keep my two feet on the ground, and hopefully keep going forward.